Christopher Priest continues his Superman Space Odyssey this issue with some rather detailed and somewhat scientifically accurate backstory and reasons for how and why Superman was shot out across the universe. I really enjoyed being able to tell Priest did his research for this story. He's not just waving it away as, hey, it's Superman, he's a superhero, it's fine, it's this is all superhero nonsense. Especially when it comes to how and why the hero survived the journey, and he's even keeping it in line with how his powers operate away from Earth's sun and to different types of solar radiation, since of course not every sun operates the same, so his powers won't operate the same. It's presented in a way that's just so easy to understand, which is a feat unto itself being that this is all just quantum and astrophysics, which is some serious heady stuff. Priest also delves into a part of Superman's character that I've seen a lot of people talk about and, you know, theorise about, and that is since Superman is Superman, why doesn't he go out and help other planets? Priest presents the answer in a really easy way to understand. Clark can and wants to, but realises his own limitations as just one man, and the fact that it's not his place to interfere with others' affairs and impose his will on these people. He understands that different cultures across the universe act differently, and what we find as alien, they find as just every day. So I like that he explained that really quickly and really easily as to why Clark isn't just going to get bogged down on one planet to the next to help all these people. He literally cannot. It's an aspect we've seen countless times and I like that Priest applied it to a cosmic level and I'm sure we're going to see a bit more of it throughout this series. Carlo Pagalayan builds off the weird and wonderful designs of the first issue as we get to explore this little part of the universe. I love that like the script, Carlo went the scientifically accurate route when depicting stuff like black holes and atmospheric re-entry. The choice to also have the First World's Clark visit be reminiscent of Earth is not lost on me either, especially in a visual sense since it's adding to Clark's longing to go home and kind of, you know, adding this a little bit of paranoia in the back of his head thinking that this could happen to Earth if he's not there or if he's gone for long enough this could be what he returns to. The new Superman suit as well feels like just classic action figure variant that you'd see on like the shelves with the jetpack and a new white look. I can't wait to see more of it since it's a really unique design and looks really cool. Superman Lost Issue 2 was a fantastic continuation of Superman's journey across space, diving hard into the science of the premise, but not in a way that would alienate anyone from understanding what is happening to our hero. I am going to give this issue a 10 out of 10. Superman Lost Issue 2 finds Bruce calling Lois, checking in on everything and telling her that he looked into the senator she's been investigating, finding him to be clean, but he is the swing vote on 202, the new omnibus bill, and he is tied to Cabot. Lois notes this all down as Bruce asks how Clark is going, and Lois goes to check on him, thinking that he's doing okay. Clark is curled up on the floor, remembering what happened during the incident as Lois comes in, telling the Superman to breathe. Clark begins to breathe again, realising that he stopped himself again since he got accustomed to holding his breath. Lois tells him that she's off to work and to call if he needs anything, reminding him to breathe as Clark tells her to lighten up on Bruce since it's not his fault. Lois assures him that she knows that it's not his fault as before. Superman is discovered by a group of little red aliens who have come to to survey the wreckage of the destroyed ship's fuel tank Superman is with. The beings bring Superman aboard and the hero throws up as he is told the atmosphere is breathable, he just needs to breathe it in. Clark breathes in deeply and passes out instantly as one of the aliens asks if the translator is working, wondering what the hero meant by carbon dioxide. The aliens realise their error and fix the mixture of atmosphere, apologising since they weren't sure what he breathed as Clark asks where he is. The aliens tell him to keep talking since they are still trying to translate his language, asking how he ended up all the way out there. Clark thinks that's a good question, telling them about his mission to stop the star drive from imploding on his planet, and being the only one who could stop it. The aliens find that rather hard to believe that he could survive a quantum singularity, learning Superman has unique abilities, and his species expresses significant biochemical reactions to gravity, and these reactions in tandem with his solar radiation processes produce a range of unique abilities, like flight. Clark remembers flying into the singularity telling the League that he can't leave since they have seen star drives like this before and the core is destabilizing and causing a gravitational pull. He finds the black hole being made by the failing engine, making it to the controls so he can test a theory. He tells the team they might want to cover their ears as he activates the controls. The Flash can tell that he's disrupted the collapse with his own body becoming part of their reaction as the black hole begins pulling the warship on the surface of the ocean towards it. Superman is told by the team that they are pulling him out but Clark tells them they 
can't since his body is now part of the circuit and the black hole collapse has activated the star drive and it's about to jump so if they pull him out the reaction will cascade and the black hole will be unstoppable and destroy earth. He unties himself from the lasso of truth wanting the league to tell Lois he'll be right back. The red aliens can't believe that he alone collapsed a singularity and lived. They reveal that while Superman has been telling the story they found his planet and his little journey will cost him 3200 credits. Clark tries to explain he doesn't have credits and the little aliens want to take his cape but as he explains that it was something from his mother they jettison him out the airlock and the hero and the destroyed ship fall to the planet's atmosphere. Clark is caught by the gravity wondering why it's fighting against him as he sees that he's not falling to earth he's on some faraway planet. Clark plummets to the ground and passes out but awakens soon in the presence of several children all whom are focused on their little computer screens rather than him. He apologizes for the landing since his powers react to radiation levels of other planets differently. He realizes that none of them are actually noticing him so he tries to get their attention grabbing one of them. The kids notice him and run off as Clark introduces himself to the boy saying that he won't hurt him. Clark tries to apologize to the kid he grabbed realizing that the mask he is wearing is a respirator allowing him to breathe. The kid struggles to breathe as the mask is removed saying that his name is Jemmy as he runs off. Clark thinks the name sounds like Jimmy as he looks at the destroyed city around him finding it looks very familiar to earth architecture. He tries to fly to stay out of sight but hits the ground hard finding thanks to the different gravity and solar radiation he's got to learn to fly all over again. He hears the kids on the devices letting out beeps from them making him think that that's what passes for laughter on this planet. Clark tries again finding gravity is heavier so he feels like he's carrying a tank on his back. He heads through the city noting the civilization is very similar to humans and Kryptonian more so in some aspects as he finds war zones and extreme environmental diversity across the planet. He finds an ice hall with alien writing on it thinking that doesn't bode well as on the other side he finds lush green farmland. A person says that he didn't heed the warning of the Great Wall as the man approaches him telling him that this region is a toxic wasteland thanks to the zealots, the mud people of Newark that Clark just met. The man introduces himself as Victor revealing that's not actually his name it's what he is as the leader of the Republic. Clark realizes that he's the victor of a war asking what the name of the planet is but Victor asks why they would name a planet wondering what Clark would call it. Clark asks how the man knows his name learning the zealots post everything into the tapestry from their little green devices which Victor thinks is all just a disinformation cesspool. He notices the hero breathes oxygen without nasal implants asking how he survived in the vacuum of space. Clark explains that he was displaced by a singularity and his body's unique properties contributed to the event which might be why he was displaced so far rather than just a few light days. He remembers scavenging the empty fuel tank of the ship and converting it to store liquid oxygen since while he can survive in space it's subject to the availability of the solar radiation to keep his powers going. Clark rigs the tank to an oxygen mask and tows it behind him flying towards various planets and using them to slingshot himself to achieve near light speeds. Victor wants to know what he means by near light so Clark explains that if he can't achieve faster than light speed he won't be able to find his way home. Victor wonders how long he's been lost and Superman has no idea knowing it could be days or weeks since without the rise and setting of a sun he sort of loses track. He remembers his space flight coming to a halt when he was hit by a series of meteorites which destroyed his oxygen tank and knocked him out which is when he was found by the little red aliens. Superman asks how they can help the people of Newark and Victor tells him they can't since it will violate the will of the people even when he knows what they do is idiotic. Superman asks Victor if being from the same species on the same planet Victor could always just cooperate with them prompting the man to ask if that's how things work on Superman's homeworld. Victor offers some things to aid Superman as the hero thinks that since this place doesn't have a name he would just call it Kansas. Victor tells Clark to go and find his homeworld since their problems are far too big for him as Clark now outfitted with a white solar suit and supplies leaves the planet to try and find Earth. 